In a healthy heart, the rate and rhythm is controlled by electrical signals that cause the heart to contract, or squeeze, in a coordinated manner. This synchronized heartbeat continuously circulates blood through the lungs and out to the rest of the body to deliver vital oxygen. An arrhythmia is a problem with the rate or rhythm of the heart and occurs when the heart's electrical signals are abnormal. Atrial fibrillation, also called AFib, is one of the most common types of arrhythmia and causes the heart to have an irregular rhythm and often beat rapidly. Atrial fibrillation can be physically exhausting, scary, and disabling, and raises the risk of heart failure, dementia, and stroke. But with proper treatment, these risks can be decreased, and people with AFib can live healthy and active lives. It's important to know your risk for AFib. There are a number of causes and risk factors, including abnormalities in the heart's physical structure from birth defects, valve disease and other heart disease, older age, family history, high blood pressure, overactive thyroid or metabolic imbalances, diabetes, lung disease, heart surgery, especially coronary artery bypass and valve surgery, obesity, viral infections or inflammation, stress, sleep apnea, chronic kidney disease, and use of alcohol and certain medications. However, a cause for AFib is not always found and people with otherwise healthy hearts may have the disease. It's also important to watch for symptoms of AFib and listen to your body if you think something might be wrong. Some people never have symptoms, while others report irregular, pounding, or rapid heartbeats that are sometimes described as the feeling of butterflies or a flopping fish in the chest. Some people also experience dizziness, fainting, breathlessness, weakness, fatigue, and reduced ability to exercise. AFib is often classified based on how often it occurs and how it responds to treatment. Paroxysmal, or intermittent AFib, is when episodes stop spontaneously but don't last more than seven days. Persistent AFib is when episodes last longer than seven days. Long-term persistent AFib lasts continuously for more than a year. Because not everyone experiences symptoms, it's important for everyone, especially those at higher risk of AFib, to have their heart listened to and their pulse checked regularly. These simple tests can often detect the irregular heart rhythm of AFib. If your healthcare professional suspects AFib, they may confirm the diagnosis with an electrocardiogram. They may also prescribe the use of a portable device or even a smartphone application to record your heart rhythm over time. If you've been diagnosed with AFib, a major goal of your treatment will be to prevent heart clots that can lead to strokes. It's also important to restore and maintain your heart rhythm and control your heart rate. This can often be done with medications. If your symptoms are new or disruptive, or if it's an emergency, you may need to have your heart rhythm restored by a cardioversion. This can be done with oral or intravenous medications or with a controlled electrical shock to the chest while under sedation. There are a number of medications that can help with rate and rhythm control. If your AFib can't be managed with medications or other treatments, a procedure may be necessary. Ablation uses heat, cold, or a laser energy to create scars in the heart that block abnormal electrical signals and restore your normal heart rhythm. Ablation can often be done with a catheter inserted through a blood vessel, called catheter ablation. If it can't be done with a catheter, the maze and mini maze procedures are surgical procedures. Another critical part of treating AFib is preventing strokes. Because the heart beats irregularly while in AFib, it doesn't pump out all the blood and affects the way blood flows through the heart, sometimes allowing clots to form. Those clots can travel from the heart to the brain and block vital blood flow and oxygen, resulting in a stroke that can be disabling or deadly. Anticoagulants, also called blood thinners, interfere with the body's clotting mechanisms and reduce stroke risk. There are a number of oral anticoagulants that work in different ways with different benefits and risks. Because they interfere with clotting, anticoagulants increase the risk of bleeding. However, fatal bleeding while on an anticoagulant is rare, and for most, even those who are older, frail, and may be at risk of falls, the benefit of preventing an AFib stroke outweighs the increased risk of bleeding. If you can't take an anticoagulant, 
Your healthcare professional may recommend a procedure to close a sac, or pouch, the left atrial appendage, where most AFib-related clots form. This left atrial appendage occlusion, or closure, can be done with a number of devices and vary as to whether they are placed using catheters or with surgery. Be a proactive member of your healthcare team. Ask questions, report changes, and talk with your healthcare professional about any concerns you have. Don't stop or switch any of your medications without talking to your healthcare professional. Maintain a healthy lifestyle by losing weight, scheduling regular exercise, managing blood pressure, quitting smoking, reducing alcohol consumption, and treating sleep apnea can all help manage your AFib. Getting an AFib diagnosis can be frightening and even confusing, but you're not alone. And with proper treatment, you can expect to live an active and healthy life. To learn more about stroke risk reduction for people with AFib, watch Preventing Atrial Fibrillation Related Strokes on YouTube and visit www.agingresearch.org AFib. Brought to you by the Alliance for Aging Research.